Welcome to the Roche Idea Lab. Please welcome Angie Howard and Angela Baldwin. Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Roche Idea Lab. Our Ideal Lab is a community where we can come together to discuss challenges we face as an industry. And it's a space where we can explore how to partner with each other to solve those challenges. Hi, my name is Angela Baldwin. And I'm Angie Howard, and we're your hosts for the Roche Idea Lab. I'm a, the regional business manager for the Molecular Franchise, supporting the Midwest region, and I bring 20 years of healthcare experience to our Idea Lab. Thanks, Angie. And I'm a board-certified anatomical pathologist. I'm working as a pathology liaison, and I've been at Roche since April. We're both really looking forward to hearing the ideas that our guests are bringing to the stage, as well as your thoughts and insights. Now, how we measure productivity in the lab is moving from turnaround times, which is task-oriented, to a workflow based on data optimization. Jim Poppin of Unity Point Health makes a case for understanding how to use and manage data in creating those workflows. He'll be joined by Roche's own Jeff Shockley. Thank you, guys. IT guys on stage with tablets. <laughs> I think this is the first time we've had two IT guys without adult supervision, so we'll see how this goes. So Jim, uh, before we dive into the topic, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about Unity Point? Sure, uh, my name is Jim Poppin. I'm a system manager at uh, Unity Point Health in Des Moines, Iowa. And we have a large system there covering Iowa, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin. A um, little over 40 hospitals, uh, we have a level one trauma center, we have a, a reference laboratory, and then probably a little bit over 250 clinics that are spread throughout Iowa, and parts of Illinois, and Wisconsin. Great, thank you. So how have you seen the state of, of metrics evolving over the years? You know, metrics in the lab is a funny thing because I remember when I first started in the lab, we didn't have an LIS, and anytime we wanted information, we had to start at a situation where we're tallying numbers, you know, how many tests have I done today? How many glucoses have I done today? Once we got the LIS, we were able to look at things such as turnaround times. And that is a relatively generic and context specific metric where it can mean different things in different contexts to different people. And it really didn't tell us how we were doing within the laboratory, it just said how the laboratory was doing overall and we also had volumes which kind of gauged how busy we were but again that's a very generic piece of information where it's very difficult to say well I know that during these times of these days for this instrument uh, I was this busy I just know that I did 4,000 glucoses on Tuesday or or what have you so um, you know having having turnaround times and volumes is great but really if we're going to make good decisions we have to have more information Right. So how do, how do you decide like what, what is the right data that I want to capture and I want to, I want to analyze, look at? Within the LIS you have a lot of information and as you add different applications you're going to increase that information exponentially. You're getting inundated with information. How do you figure out what information you need for the decision that you make? And really what you're looking at is what are we going to use the data for? And the, the answer to that question really drives the information that you're going to need to use. And so really, when we look at what we did for uh, one of our projects of building a reference lab, we had so much information that we, it was very difficult to make a good decision. And we realized that we're going to be adding more information as we had conversations with uh, additional vendors about additional products. And we realized quickly that don't know is don't know, and you can't make a good decision if you don't know. Right. And so gathering that information and, and making sure that we had uh, you know, a full encyclopedia of the information that we needed in order to make a good decision was at the top of our list of things to do. But that wasn't the only thing. I mean, what are you gonna do with all this information? Right. You have to have some driving factor to make sure that you're, you're meeting an end. You have your goal, you have your vision, but you don't want to deviate that through the process, especially if it's a long-term project. You have a lot of information, you have a lot of decisions to make, you have a, um, a, a vision that you want to capitalize on. So 
creating a set of pillars or guiding principles is going to be important. And that's going to be for any information that you're looking at. I, I want to use this information to make a decision. And so in order to do that, I have to frame it within a certain aspect. Okay. So with, with automation becoming more prevalent in the lab, how, how do you see data utilization needs changing because of that? So we need automation to work in concert with our staff. And that means that whoever implements that, that automation has to understand what the staff is doing. Um, and typically speaking, we kind of categorize this that we need specimens to be at the right place at the right time. We need specimens to be traceable throughout our lab so we know exactly where they are. And we need them accessible at any point in time. Without that information, then our staff isn't truly working in concert with the automation. Right. Yeah, we, we realized, I mean, with, with Cobos Infinity, um, you know, we, we looked at the integration between auto, analytics, automation, and we knew that that tight, tight integration was going to be critical. And, and the wealth of data that it's generating to feed you know, our platforms like our analytics dashboards and all of that. Right. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about, the, you and I have talked about macro data. Um, right. how, how you've used Infinity to, you know, first what is macro data, but also how you've used Infinity to access that information. Sure, so we consider macro data as turnaround times or volumes. It's relatively generic within the laboratory information about a certain state or, or information. And it doesn't really give us uh, a granular perspective that, that we might see on a, on a micro scale. So uh, a macro analytic would be turnaround times, but you know, there are certain pieces of information that are still macro that we need to take a look at where when we have an application, we can see, hey, you know what, I have uh, specimens being delivered to the lab. I have, I have this many specimens coming in between uh, four and, and eight or whenever our morning rush is. And that means that I can go ahead and take a look at that information and say, well, I need to think about staffing at this point. Well, if your application or whatever you're using to, to, to collect that data doesn't give you that macro data, then you're kind of just either hand tallying all that information or you're using a, a specific point in time and extrapolating it. And that can be misleading, especially over a long-term period. Okay. So let, let's switch gears and talk about micro data. You know, how, how have you, you utilized that in optimizing the workflow, you know, specifically with the Roche solutions and with Infinity? So at a micro level, what we're looking at is essentially the, the path of the specimen. Because the specimen is everything in the laboratory. It's the beginning and the end. When we collect it and receive it in, we have a group of people that are acting on that specimen within particular applications. When we pass that on and it goes either onto, let's say an automation platform or into a centrifuge, that's information that we can use to identify how are we going to manage that particular process. And it's at a much granular scale where we can take a look at, hey, I have a specimen that is going for an A1C and a CBC. And it's ordered on a single specimen. And the path of that specimen is critical to our staff to be able to manage effectively. So how can we effectively manage that specimen? Because we don't know exactly what the CBC results are going to be like. Can't do the A1C until the CBC is done, including the differential. So now we, we need to understand how that specimen flows throughout the lab not necessarily at a macro scale, but at a micro scale. How many times do I have to wait for that specimen to have a differential performed in order to, before I can pass it on to the A1C? And, and that gets more complicated as we add in additional tests. Sure. So can, can you give some, some more specific examples of where you've, you've utilized some of this data to optimize those workflows, where you've, you've made changes in the lab based upon the data that you've you've seen. Yeah, so, you know, with Infinity, what we've been able to do is we've been able to take the micro data and really examine how we can remove the burden from our users. And that's what automation is about. We need to find a way to take the burden of our users and automate it so that they can focus on things like generating results and doing maintenance and, and managing some of the things that just automation just can't. 
And so some of the things that we've come up with, and, and especially in collaboration with Roche, was recursive sorting. And, and uh, if you haven't heard of recursive sorting, basically what we're doing is we're eliminating the idea of pass-ons. So no longer will a specimen start at A testing area and go to B testing area and then go to C testing area. What happens is the specimen goes on to, let's say the 8100, and will be sorted and, and it'll be managed, it may be centrifuged, it may be aliquoted. That specimen then goes to the first sort target. The person in your testing area, location one, picks it up, does the, does the testing. They don't need to know where it goes next. They can focus on resulting and not on managing that specimen. All they need to know is that specimen goes back on the input buffer of the 8100 and it can go on to the next place, which would be testing location two and so on and so forth until at the end it can be stored or archived however you need it to be. Okay. One of the other ways that we've able to do this is through proactive throughput management. And proactive throughput management means that um, it, we have a reference lab. We have couriers and sometimes couriers get delayed and sometimes cars break down and sometimes things just happen where we can't count on a morning rush or an afternoon rush. And so how are we going to manage that? I mean, we have all of these clients that are depending on us to get their patients reported and we don't want any kind of choke points. And so what we can do is we can use the idea of, of hey, we've exceeded a certain limit for throughput at this point. We need to initiate an alternative form of throughput management. And that could be by utilizing the AOB or the P701 or it could be, hey, you know what, text, hey, you know what, uh, you know, your customer, uh, your client support, you can go ahead and just, just relax a little bit for re resulting and relax a little bit for receiving specimens in, and we'll know that. And, and it's very reactive and, and, and our, our users can be um, involved in that decision making at a, an exceptionally granular level. Um, and then one of the issues that we have in our pathology laboratory, uh, the reference lab, is we have an issue of, of monitoring um, alternative workflows. And that's when somebody says, hey, instead of doing it the way that, that I was told to do it, I have to do it a different way. And it could be completely justifiable. But we need to understand why that happened. We need to be able to look into our details of all the logs within Infinity or within in the, in the, of the other applications and say, okay, I understand that you had an issue with this particular specimen for this test and you had to break from our expected protocol and procedure. Let's find out what happened from an, an automation perspective. Did something internal cause that? Um, did you, you know, is there a better way of managing that? And we can really look at a, a forward thinking perspective to try and counteract that in the future so it doesn't happen again. So how difficult have you found, like when you have that adaptive type of a scenario, to, to still have access to the data that you may not have thought about? Oh, it's, it's, it's important and it's easy to find. Um, you know, when, when we start looking at um, any number of troubleshooting screens within Infinity or any other application, it's very easy to put that all together because we're, we're putting all that information together and it's accessible. And so it's pretty easy to do. Good, good. Yeah. So if, if someone was, was to come to you, they're, they're implementing a, a Roche automation system with Infinity, what, what advice would you give them as it relates to data optimization in, in Infinity? So you're going to have to learn a lot. And you're going to have to learn a lot about not only the hardware, but the, the software, the applications. You're going to have to make sure that you understand where you are. And once you know where you are and kind of what's offered to you in terms of features and functions from, from an, an automation perspective and from, from an infinity perspective, you're able to map that out. And when you map that out, make sure that you identify your pillars, make sure that you're sticking to your vision, make sure that you are doing some peer review so that as you're moving forward, making decisions and, and, and looking at you know, progressing infinity in any way that you can maintain that vision without deviating because everybody realizes scope creep is a problem in a project. Everybody realizes that, you know, oh, you know, we, we should have done it this way um, and, and now we can go ahead and, 
Um, with our vision, we can evaluate if this way is accurate, if it fits our vision, and if so, we can make that because we have all of our data available to us instead of, well, I think we'll guess and make a decision this way. Right, right. Do, do you have any thoughts on, on how things evolve from here? You know, things that you would like to see to better have you have access to the data to help you manage your lab? You know, a lot of the data is going to be context driven and, and having that accessible um, and, and, and given to us in such a way where we can put it into the larger picture because let's face it, no one application is going to give you all of the information that you need in the specific scenario that you need it. And so, you know, you may have to rely on uh, reports from another application. You may have to do um, some extracts from, from you know, a, a completely different application. And all of a sudden, you're doing the same thing as what we did for the turnaround time is, hey, you know, uh, okay, I, I just need to know lab to lab, or I need to know ER to ER for turnaround times. You know, if it's, you know, if it's a floor-based generic floor, then turnaround times mean something very different than it is for an ICU. Um, and playing that game doesn't get us anywhere. What we need to do is to create an environment where we're formulating and collecting all that information in a very, very granular way so that we can go through it and say, I know this is my start point, I have the information for my end point, and every little piece in between, I can trace it and pick out which pieces that I want. And so essentially it's going to be finding a focus point, a collating point, for all that data so that we can say, here it is. I don't have to go here, here, and here. I don't have to say, well, you know, in, in this particular application, it's this context, but in this particular application, it doesn't necessarily mean the same. Everybody's dealt with that, and it's not fun. Okay. And that's where I think we should go, in my opinion. Cool. So but before we open it up for questions, uh, any closing remarks, any closing thoughts? Yeah, automation. Uh, today, and especially the applications for automation, are giving us information that we never would have thought of 10 years ago, or five years ago even. And what we do at that is very, very, very important because, let's face it, we're dealing with patient lives here, and that's the most important thing to us. We need to make sure that we're keeping the expectation of our vendors up to speed for them to advance and give us the tools that we need as lab managers, as bench techs, as system solutions. We need to make sure that, that we're finding a way to express to our vendors, hey, we need this from you guys. And honestly, with Roche, that we've gotten that, especially with our latest project. It's been phenomenal. It's been so. awesome. Well, thank you. So we're not going to let you guys leave until we do ask some questions. So uh, any, anybody have any questions for, for Jim or, or myself? Crickets chirping here. <laughs> no? All right, if you do have any questions, just if you see my, my beard underneath my mask, yeah. come grab me and I'd love to chit chat with you guys. All right, well thanks Jim. Right. Th and thank, thank you, you for, for attending. Thank you. All right.